Hey all, this is a little update on the ATC conversion I did on the ShopBot. Uh, so for those of you that haven't seen the previous video, this is a ShopBot 4x8 uh, PRS. It's been um, drive systems changed, a whole bunch of parts have been changed from the original, running a Centroid Acorn control system, and we have an S30C um, ATC spindle. And um, last time you saw this, I had uh, installed the spindle and I had the uh, rack of tools actually out over here and um, I did that because uh, the gantry was actually rotated 180 degrees and the only place I could put the tool rack on was over there um, and I just wanted to get it all together get the system tested out get all the scripts dialed in and um, then ultimately what I did was uh, pick up this gantry flip it 180 degrees slide these rails back as far as I could get so now my tool rack uh, hangs out uh, back here and it's much easier to um, load material in. So I'll show you how it works. Um, essentially we have obviously ATC spindle here. Uh, we've got a fixed touch plate over here, tool rack and back. And we've got this um, dust dock here, which I'll show you uh, in a second. And um, I set the scripting up on this thing so that a series of things have to be true uh, before a tool change can take place. Now, the drive system on this is um, open loop, so um, you know if you lose position during a cut job, you don't get any feedback if that happened. And that can be bad news, is if you were to lose position in the middle of a job, and the ATC goes back and tries to pick up a tool, thinks it's over the tool, and it's not, um, that can cause problems. You can break tools, or you can mess up your ATC, things like that. So I have uh, the tool chain script set up such that it will actually uh, go flying over here and it will hit all of the proc switches. And um, if the proc switches are where it thinks they should be, the tool change will proceed. Um, if they're not, it'll throw up an error and ask the operator you know, to rehome or to otherwise fix the error. Um, also, there is a relay in the VFD, which is connected to an input on the Acorn, uh, which um, closes when the spindle comes to a stop. So the tool change cannot start unless the spindle is uh, physically not moving. Um, additionally, there is an air pressure sensor here, um, also connected to an input, so there has to be adequate air pressure um, or the tool change also won't proceed because you need adequate air pressure um, to run the drawbar. Um, so that's kind of the safety systems I have in place to make sure that tool changes are successful and we're not damaging the you know, the spindle or the router rack. So um, let's see a tool change happen here. So we'll go over to uh, setup ATC and let's just grab tool number nine, because why not? And you'll see how this works here with the dust dock. So we're gonna go over here. It's gonna check against all the sensors, make sure it's in the right spot. And we'll go back here. And so now it's gonna go in here and it's gonna slide the dust shoe into this little dock. I do have a few extra pauses in here. I'm still doing a little bit of debugging on these scripts, so we'll pop, we'll move some of those out uh, once everything's nice and smooth. So we go pick up this tool here. we go that's a tool change um, now what I've also done is I've created another script that um, if any of the tools so if we go into our tool library here and we go to offset see all the tools um, I've got 10 tools so they're all measured here and so I set up a script that um, if I take any of these tools out um, and you know replace them with something else uh, you know different tools something like that or swap their positions around um, if I go in here and I change any of these tool heights to zero, what happens is next time it grabs that tool, it will stop by and it will tap it on the uh, fixed touch-off plate. Um, so it'll measure it. So you can, you know, right before you're running a job, I can change three or four of these tools uh, to suit the job that I'm doing and just go into my offset library and zero those all out. And it will just, next time it picks up that tool, it will zero it. Uh, and then continue cutting, and if it sees a number in here, so the tool's already been measured, it will skip that step, and you know you end up getting a faster tool change 
Um, I also wrote a script that'll just mass zero all of the tools, so it'll run through and it'll just pick every single one of them up, tap the plate, come back, um, and so on. And um, that one in the script, I have a, a mode called Turbo Mode, which disables all of the uh, limit checking because you know the idea is if you're just moving around in the air and picking up tools, there's really no reason that you'd lose steps, so it doesn't need to do that uh, sensor check every time or dock the uh, dust shoe in between you know each um, tool change uh, so that's my setup um, i would recommend that anyone on acorn doing this um, seriously consider um, you know getting the expansion board i'd like to have more inputs uh, here like perhaps a switch to confirm that the dust shoe actually has uh, been removed um, you know a couple other little things like that to make it work but i was able to make it all work on a stock center at acorn so um, there you go uh, let me know if you have any questions